turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders a shame I hear my mocking voice call loud among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life I know that it is finished I will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection why should I gain from give an answer but this I know with all my heart his wounds have paid my ransom why should I gain from his reward I cannot give an answer but this I know I know with all my heart his wounds have paid my ransom. All right. You may be seated. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Please stand again.
ground. My hope in firm foundation, oh, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope in firm foundation, oh, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope in firm foundation, oh, he'll never let me down. No, he'll never let me down. Sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. You may be seated. were pioneers in the present-day home education movement. She is a veteran homeschooling mom who now serves as our voice in, the, in Florida's capital, where she advocates for homeschooling students and families. Ms. Dickinson served as an advisor, consultant, and mentor to the parents and has lectured on varied topics relating to home education. She became the president of the Home Education Foundation after the death of her husband in 1993. As a result of her work in the Florida Capitol, home education students enjoy participation in Florida Virtual School and dual enrollment along with free instructional materials, high school sports and extracurricular activities, bright future scholarships as well as scholarships for home educated students with disabilities. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Dickinson. Thank you so much, and it's a privilege for me to be here with you on this special day. Um, Thursday night, I also had the privilege of attending a concert by the Tallahassee Homeschool String Orchestra, which a couple of you played today. It was exciting to see homeschool students display their talents. I learned that during the school year, several were able to compete in district and all-state competitions to showcase their accomplishments. It caused me to reflect on how the Lord has blessed the home education movement in Florida. In 1984, parents who chose to home educate their children were in hiding, and several of them who were discovered was charged with truancy. A few were arrested and taken to court. None of those parents could have even imagined attending a concert by home educated students or watching their child participate in sports at a public or private school, or having a graduation ceremony like this. Yet God had a plan. It all began when a handful of brave and committed parents across the state heard God's call to teach their children at home. They stepped out of their comfort zone, risked prosecution, and in faith followed God's leading. You know it was God who was directing the steps when a few parents in Miami, Pensacola, Jacksonville, Orlando, Gainesville, and Tallahassee, who did not know each other, began to meet with legislators and ask them to make homeschooling legal in Florida. It was not organized. It was individual parents hearing God's call and following his lead. Most of us felt as though we were all alone and faced the possibility of arrest but each of us felt the risk was worth it. We were not lobbyists and had no idea how to change a law. 
We just followed the path the Lord laid before us. Both chambers of the legislature were controlled by Democrats who supported the teachers' union. The governor was a Democrat. According to the rules of the House, Republicans could not even have their bills heard in committee. So we, we didn't know all of that at the time, but we just knew that the Lord had called us. And as you look back with those kind of um, odds against us, you'll understand when I say it was miraculous that it passed in one year. The grassroots efforts of those parents resulted in the passage of the home education law miraculously in one session in 18, 1985. Even though that law now protected parents, many were still faced with a lot of um, persecution from family, friends, school districts, and even the teachers' union. Many people didn't want to tell they were homeschooling their children at the time, and they kept them home during the school hours so they didn't have to answer questions. Today, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the Home Education Foundation, but since it's your graduation, I think we need to talk about your future. God has a plan for your life. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord declares, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. In today's uncertain world, that is a promise that you can hold on to. Some of you may have your pl lives planned. Others are still deciding. But let me encourage you to seek God's plan for your life. He wants to use you in a way that you may never have dreamed of. And that's what happened to me. The last thing I wanted to be was a lobbyist. I majored in home economics and was promoting Florida seafood across the nation after college. I loved my job. In fact, I turned down a job promotion early in my career because it would have required me to lobby the legislature. Funny how God works. I was not passionate about seafood, but I was passionate about my children and their education. My husband, Craig, was an attorney and a volunteer part-time lobbyist for home education from 1985 until he passed away in 1993. There were several challenges to the law during that time, but there was no one at the Capitol following home education issues. Craig had to depend on friends who were lobbyists to let us know if a challenge arose. It was before the days of computers, if you can even imagine such a thing. And cell phones. You had to physically be present in the committee to, and to pick up hard copies of the bills if you wanted to know what was going on. During the 1990s session, an abuse law was passed sponsored by the uh, Children and Families Committee that required every parent to have a background screening before they were allowed to home educate their child. Craig was able to work with the Department of Education after the session to minimize the intrusive nature of the law. He convinced the department that the spirit of the law could be met by having parents sign an affidavit David stating that they had never been convicted of child abuse. It was then that we decided a full-time lobbyist was necessary. So Craig established the Home Education Foundation. We never intended to do the lobbying ourselves. We were only going to raise money to hire a lobbyist. But in 1993, Craig passed away with cancer. At that time, our children could not go to public or private school without repeating ninth and 10th grades. Our decision to home educate was now going to penalize my children, and I was brokenhearted. I sought the Lord asking who he was going to send to continue the work. He said, you, and I said, no. <laughs> Quickly, I said, no. <laughs> but after weeks of arguing with the Lord, I agreed to be his instrument. If he would provide the wisdom, help me understand the issues, and remove the mountains I knew that I would face. So alone, with no legal training or financial support, I began lobbying for the Home Education Foundation. God had a plan. I just had to be willing. He's used me to open doors for home education students, many of which my children never were able to enjoy. However, 
It, op it helped me see the barriers that were, cr were there for home educated students. And so all of the privileges that you heard mentioned earlier, dual enrollment with free instructional materials, bright futures, scholarships for students um, with unique abilities, all of those things have been a result of the work of the Home Education Foundation. Parents today no longer fear prosecution or persecution because almost everyone knows someone who is homeschooled now. God knew that COVID was coming and parents of public and private school students would be forced to consider other options, including home education. As a result, many parents decided they could home educate. And according to the U.S. Census Bureau's Experimental Household Pulse Survey, the number of home educated students doubled in the 2021 school year. I believe God wants parents to teach their children and train them in the way they should go. So he is continuing to bless the home education movement. Every year there's a need for a lobbyist because we need a watchman on the gate. I've been here a long time and maybe God is calling someone in the audience today to step into my shoes. I'll be willing to train you. Today is both an end and a beginning for each of you graduates. You may not know what God has in store for you, but you can trust him. Psalm 37, 23 says, the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord. As you make your life choices, he has an exciting adventure planned for you. Now may the God of peace equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Congratulations, graduates. We look forward to seeing how God is going to use you in the future. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Exodus 20, 12, the fifth commandment. To honor our parents is to respect their position as our caregivers. That position has been ordained by God, the ultimate father. On this special day, I want to recognize all of you moms and dads. You have raised us. That in itself is an accomplishment. Moms and dads, I want you to remember the first time you held your child. You were probably excited, nervous, and a little out of it. You were probably thinking, how am I gonna do this? How can I raise this little human? Well, by the grace of God, you did it. You pushed through hard times and sleepless nights to get to this moment right here, right now. Parents, you are the reason we made it here today. I want to thank you on behalf of my fellow graduates for your care, your wisdom, and most of all, your love for us. I am proud of you, and I know God is too. To my own mom and dad, I could not have asked for better parents. You have guided me and loved me for the past 18 years, and I know you will always be there for me. Your support in all aspects of my life has made me into the young woman I am. I have learned from you that my walk with Jesus Christ depends on a willing heart. Mom and Dad, I love you, and I will always be your little girl. Thank you. Hello. Today I have the honor of introducing today's commencement speaker. I personally, along with many others in this class, have had the privilege of participating in one of his many athletic teams, but more importantly for all of us, he has been a great representation of Christian, Christian leadership, a life centered around the Lord, and the pursuit of excellence. So could you please help me introduce Coach Bob Horn. All right. 
right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, I'm not going to stand behind the lectern and be a professional and all that stuff. All right. The most important thing, that's the clock. That's what gets you guys out of here. So make sure my phone doesn't go dead, right? All right. So graduates of 2022, man, congratulations. First off, let me get, let me get that out of the way. You can clap for them. That's fine. All right. All right. Now you, you, you've done all of your work. You've graduated. You've done your thing. And now you're getting ready to get your diploma. And that's really, really cool and all that. But you've, I've got one more assignment for you because I want you to understand your parents, you know, they used to be cool. And then you came along. Right? And now their parents, you know, they, their life was over the day you were born, right? It's like, I've got to take care of this little person, like she was just saying. And, and that's how it is. I mean, the, the sleepless nights, the drives in the rain, the cold weather, the, you know, oh, this looks terrible on me. The, you know, all that stuff. They, they dealt with all of this stuff for a long, long time. So I want you guys, graduates, please stand up. That'll, that'll get your blood circulating just in case you start dozing on me. So I want you to make eye contact with your parents wherever they are. Find them if you can. Even if you're short, you can do the hippity hop, all right? Clap for your parents. Give them a big round of applause. Thank you, parents. Thank you. All right. Y'all can sit down now. You didn't know I was going to make you do stuff, did you? Right? Well, I'm going to tell you, it seems like just yesterday I was graduating. I know you're saying, man, I hope that guy had more hair back then than he does now. Well, I did. I had a, lot, I had a big fro, as a matter of fact. I did. And it seems like yesterday, and some old geezer curmudgeon was up on the stage giving a speech. I have no idea what he said. All I knew was it was hot, I was itching, and I was ready to go. I'd done 12 years of school, and I didn't want to hear what this guy had to say. I'm going to try my best not to bore you or put you to sleep or, or any of that stuff. I want you to listen because what I'm going to tell you today is going to be very important. It, this, when you step out, the, out of these doors today, there should be a total paradigm shift for you. You're no longer a kid. I know you think you are. You feel like a kid, and you're looking to your left and your right, and you're going, man, these are my competitors. They're not. I am. I am. You're entering a land of where you're, you're, the competition field has just grown exponentially. And people aren't just going to step aside and let you walk through. That's just not how it works. And so what we're going to talk about today is, is, is understanding that there are no freebies out there. And the principles that I'm going to share with you, I want you to remember them. Because I don't care if you're 18 or 80. These principles apply across the board. They're solid. They're proven I don't care whether you're going in the military. I don't care if you're going into college, trade school, any of that. Whatever you choose to do with your life, um, whether it be in the arts or, or whatever it is, this will apply to you. I guarantee it. So strap in. I got 18 minutes left, and I plan on cramming them full of a lot of information. All right. So the first thing I want to tell you is what you are, not who you are, but what you are. You are a triune being, right? You are a physical body. You are a brain, a mind, and you are a soul that lasts for eternity. And within this triune being, this brain, this mind of yours, some people will say he's the middle man, but I'm going to say the metal man, M-E-D-D-L-E, -E, like meddling, getting you into trouble. And that's what the old brain does. It tells you you can't do it. It tells you you won't do it. You can't succeed. You're not fast enough. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. And so you have to become mentally tough and that's what this is going to teach you to do these concepts are going to teach you this mental toughness that are going to apply to everything in your life remember this you're not what you think you are you are what you think in other words the thoughts in your mind are what create who you are just thinking you're something does not make you that you have to become mentally tough or the world will define you the world will beat you up I promise you if you don't develop mental toughness we've been through this big lockdown and all this stuff and I want to tell you I applaud you for being here today because I know it's been hard I don't know how hard it's been on you guys because I, I wasn't young but I guarantee you if I was in high school and all of this stuff would have happened it would have been very very difficult and mental health is a big thing in this country right now I want you to be mentally tough and I'm going to give you some good news although this is horrible news at the same time. Most of the world are weak, and most of them are quitters. All right, just let you know that. You're not. You're not. You're sitting here because you're not. And when you step out into this world, obstacles are going to, they're, they're going to jump up there. Marcus Aurelius wrote this. He said, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way is the way. 
Do you know what that means? It means the obstacle. The obstacle is the way. The hard path is the right path. I will tell you this. I've told my children this their whole life. Welcome to grown-up land where the hard decision is always the right one. The easy decision is never the right one. So the first thing you're going to have to do to be mentally tough is you're going to have to harness your thoughts. You have to harness your thoughts because if you don't, you're going to be all over the place. Like right now, you're probably thinking, man, I wish this guy would shut up so I'd get out of here. But you've got to harness that thought, right? You've got to listen because what I'm telling you is going to matter to you. It's going to change who you are. And if you apply these principles, it's going to help you. I don't want you to feel lost. I don't want you to feel afraid. I don't want you to feel confused. I want you to develop calluses on that brain so when the world starts attacking you as they're going to, they attack me, you're nobody. That's how it works. That's how it is. If you're doing the right thing, I guarantee you're going to be attacked. First thing I'm going to tell you, here's another thing I'm going to tell you other than callous your brain is this and control your thoughts. Boy, here's an unpopular phrase. Quit whining. You know what whining is? It is an advertisement of your weakness. That's what whining is. I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. I'm blah, blah, blah. You know what it is? It's saying, I don't have the self-control to do this or to do that. Do not advertise your weakness. Trust me, it'll lead to apathy and mediocrity. Here's a phrase that I came up with years ago. Mediocrity is the acceptable standard for those unwilling to work. Let's work. We are here to work. We're here to do our thing. We don't run to the lie. We run to the truth. And you need to create that in your mind as you develop your mental toughness. You have to run to the truth. Bad decisions in your life. You may have made a ton of them. But I'm going to tell you, starting right now today, throw all those bad decisions away. And you're starting new right now. Wherever you're going in life, those people don't know who you are. You're whoever you show up as. You show up as a champion. They know you from the day they met you as a champion, as a leader, as a winner, as a victor. And that's how you need to start your race. You're ending one competition today. I'm a coach. I see everything that way. That's my paradigm. You're starting a new one now. When you walk out there, it's a new one. Realize, here's how many bad decisions it takes to change your life. You ready? One. And it doesn't have to be a big one, right? It can be a little one. Because one little bad decision leads to another and to another and to another and to another and to another. And all of a sudden, 10 years from now, you find yourself 80 pounds overweight and still wondering what you're going to do when you grow up. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. Here's another hard one for you. You're going to love this one and hate this one all at the same time. Accept criticism. Accept it. And here's where this, this is hard for people, I think. Not constructive criticism, that's easy. Except destructive criticism. When people were tearing you to pieces, write down what they said, take the things that are true, put them in a column, and fix those things. Because I'm going to tell you when you're being criticized, if you're like me, and I think most of you are, we get our feelings hurt a little bit, right? We, we get sensitive and we go on the defensive. We no longer, we're not subjective to it. So accept your criticism. In order to do these things, all of these things, you're going to have to develop some habits in your life. We're going to talk about that real quick because I'm halfway through already. So I'm going to tell you about habits. In your life, if you get up every morning at 7 o'clock and you go, I have things to do. And you have all of these good habits in your life. If you quit one of those good habits, I promise you a bad habit will replace it. You create good habits in your life. Bad habits fill the void. When you quit doing something right, a bad habit will find its way in there every time. Oh, I'm not going to worry about eating right anymore. Then you won't. I'm not going to get up every morning and pray. You, well, guess what? Then you'll sleep those extra minutes and you'll become more lazy and apathetic and your life will turn in that direction. It really, really will. So remember, you are your habits. You have to do this. Exercise integrity at the moment of choice. I'm going to repeat that. Exercise integrity at the moment of choice. All right, you, you all, you, you're all educated, highly educated, I might add. You, you remember reading about Pavlov's dog. They ring the bell, right, give him food, and then before long they ring the bell and he's drooling. I have good news. You're not a dog. When they ring the bell, you can say no. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. And 
I'm going to tell you something else. If you find yourself like right here, some of you may be trying not to doze off. It's pretty hard sometimes. You know what that means? It doesn't mean that I'm boring because I know I'm not. What it means is you're tired. That's what that means. And you know how to not be tired? To have the self-control and the discipline to turn the phone off and get in bed at night. And then to have the self-control and discipline to get up in the morning. And I'll tell you this, you lose an hour in the morning, you'll be looking for it all day. You'll never find it. The worst invention in the world, boy, parents are going to hate this. The worst invention in the world is the snooze alarm. I hate the snooze alarm. If you hit the snooze alarm, there's your first loss of the day. You don't even have the self-control to get out of bed. Well, that's hard nose, isn't it? My wife hates that about me too because I get up at 4.30 every morning. She's like, that guy is a psycho. All right? <laughs> So go to bed, get up in the morning, plan your life, because if you don't, the world will plan it for you. Here's another way to do, here's another winning habit. You ready? This is a tough one too. Do something hard every day. Every day. I don't care if it's take a cold shower. I don't care if it's say, well, I normally go for my walk in the morning at 8 o'clock. I'm going to go at 4 o'clock when it's 100 degrees. Do something hard every single day because here is a reality. The harder you make your life, the easier your life will be. If you can challenge yourself daily, then when people throw challenges in your way, you've already been there. You've already been there. So you're going to have to be courageous to do that. Now, I'm going to do something really difficult with you guys, and I know you're graduates. This may be hard, but on the count of three, you're going to say a word. I'm going to tell you what the word is, and I want you to practice this when you get home tonight. I want you to look in the mirror after all your partying and having a good time, throwing your hat up in the air and hugging your parents and crying and all that. The word is no. Okay, count of three. One, two, three. No. No. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. You know, it may be difficult for you to believe, but I actually was a professional at one time and taught managers things. And the first thing I teach them is no. You know, there's this guy you may have heard of. His name was Jesus. You may have heard. I don't know if he did or not. He said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. You do not owe anyone an explanation for your no. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And if you're doing it from the proper place, it'll be a-okay. All right, here's another one. This is a big one for young people and old people alike. I'm not asking you to do it here because you'll embarrass yourself. But if you look around at your circle of friends, I want you to know you're looking at you. If your friends look like a bunch of losers, I got some bad news. <laughs> <All right. laughs> got some bad news, baby. You know, because <laughs> the Bible, Proverbs 13, 20 says this. He who walks with wise men will be wise. Here's the hard part. But the companion of fools doesn't say you'll be foolish. It's worse than that. Will suffer harm. You actually suffer harm. It hurts you. You're going to have to trim it. You're going to have to trim the fat. You're going to have to. If you want to go places in your life, I'm not saying don't love the person. You know what? They need to want to choose to walk with you because you're wise. You don't choose to walk with them because they're foolish. You're not seeking their approval. If you got their approval, what would it matter? You don't, you don't want to be like them anyway. So be wise, walk with the wise, and the people who are not wise will see you as a beacon and a light on the hill, and they will want to walk with you. And that's, that's the message today. I'm going to talk to you real quick about this. We talked about the triune being, what we are. If I took any of you, whether it's the least physical fit or the most physically fit, I promise you if I had... If I said, okay, every day for two to four hours, you're going to the gym with me. We'll be there at 5.30 in the morning, every day, seven days a week, and I'm gonna work you like you've never worked in your life. In fact, as Jacob Kling was gonna say, hey, can I, t can I share that you made me throw up in the pool one time? And I'm like, man, that's one of the most proud moments of my life. <laughs> because I promise you that in a year, if I could control what you put in your mouth, and I take you to the gym every day, you know, just sitting there, just from hearing me talk, you're like, man, I would be a beast. I could be on GQ magazine or Cosmopolitan. I'd be awesome, six-pack abs and muscles and all that. You could. The same thing holds true with your mind. It's that we can see our body, that we realize working on it makes a difference. 
But your mind, you have to work on your mind in the same way that you work on your body. And in your soul, you have to work on your soul every single day. Because if not, you're going to be the weak, wormy dude at the, at the, on the beach getting, getting sand kicked in your face. All right, you old people will get that joke. Um, but remember that. You have to work on all parts of you. And this brain is going to tell you you can't do it. You're too tired. It's too hard. It's not too tired. You're not too tired. It's not too hard. I'm going to tell you, I, I live my life with what I'm telling you. I live my life this way. I live my life on the fringes. I want to be the freak. I want to be the anomaly, the one that, that is, hey, that guy is still doing that at this age. Is that, that's crazy. That's insane. It can't be done. So feed your mind, feed your soul, feed your body, take care of it, work it, stretch it, strain it. Because I'm going to tell you, this world, this world has a bloodlust for you, and it will tear you apart. Do not let the world do that. And, and I'm going to tell you, the moment you try to please this world, you will realize it has an unquenchable thirst for you, has an unquenchable thirst, and nothing that you can do will please it. Right is right if nobody's doing it. Wrong is wrong if everybody's doing it. Do the right thing. It really is difficult. You thought I was going to say it really isn't that difficult. It really is difficult. I know what you're saying. You're saying there's no way this guy can be 60 years old, but yes, I am. I'm 60 years old, and it's still difficult. I don't feel any different than you guys. When I get up, the only way it's different is when I look in the mirror and I go, holy cow, that guy is old. But I feel just like you do. When I run, I feel like you do. When I lift weights, I feel like you do. When I read a book, I feel like you do. It, the, it, the thought of the advancement of my life. Because life is awesome, man. God gave you a life. You know, hear people talk about, well, your life's too short. Life's too short to be, you know, not be happy. Let me tell you something. Life's too long to be miserable. Don't be miserable. Life is too short. We feel all that. But you know what? It's not for us. We have eternal life. But this world, in this life, you got a long time. You got plenty of time. Don't waste it, though, because, man, it'll, you start happening. They start happening. So I know what you're saying, man. Coach, you, you've told me to quit whining. You've told me to get up in the morning, go to bed early. Man, that sounds like something that I've been told when I was five. You're right. And when you're 65, you're still going to need to be told that because most of us, most of us don't do it. We don't. Turn the junk off in your life. Turn the junk off in your life. You're going to step out into this world, and your world is changing. I don't want you to be afraid of it. In fact, I want you to be bold. I want you to be emboldened by this because the knowledge you have about being mentally tough is going to make your life sweeter. It's going, to put, it's going to make you a cut above in your life. And that's where you want to be. God has not created you to be some apathetic, lazy, good for whatever. He has created you for personal excellence in every endeavor in your life. If you are going to mop the floor in the bathroom, get the Q-tips out and clean the corners. If you're going to do it, do it right. If you take the garbage out, put the pine saw in the garbage can and wipe it out. And do it with a smile on your face because malicious compliance is laziness. It just is. We can call it what we want, but that's what it is. So when you leave tonight, I want you to kill all of your, all of your snooze alarms. Make sure you have no snooze alarms ever again. Turn them all away. You, you don't need that junk. You're not weak. When you set your alarm clock, you get out of bed. All right, I'm going to close up. We're at 19 minutes. Look at that. So are you all still awake? Do you think that you can go out in this world and be mentally tough, graduates? Yes, sir. That, that's what I want to hear. Nice. I like it. Very good. All right. I'm going to leave you with a quote. There was another guy, an old guy. I like reading about old people a lot. There's a coach named Vince Lombardi. And anybody in here that was a Green Bay Packer fan back when they weren't terrible, um, back when I was a boy, all right, Vince Lombardi wrote this. All right. Watch your beliefs. They become your thoughts. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. 
Your character is your legacy. Congratulations, class of 22. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach, for sharing. Thank you, parents. So if you guys weren't taking notes, I was taking some notes for you. We'll go down that list. He said, quit whining. Get up at 4.30. Never hit snooze. Avoid losers. <laughs> Learn to say no when appropriate. Do hard things. Don't waste your life. Feed your mind, your body, and soul. And in there, I also know he said that we need young men and young women to follow the Lord and stand up and be who you need to be. So that's the challenge you've heard from your coach, from your friend, from your parents. And so it's come that time now to celebrate this moment with the presentation of the diplomas. And so parents are going to take their spot in just a second. Graduates are going to take their spot. Everybody else just remains seated. And after everybody's lined up, we'll begin with the presentation uh, one family at a time. We have 45 uh, graduating students. As far as I know, that might be the biggest we've had here in Tallahassee. It's been a great time together, but it's time to celebrate their accomplishment. And so at this time, students, if you'll stand... You guys can begin to take your spot. Parents also, if you'll stand at this time and take your spot as well, we'll begin in just a moment with the presentation of the diplomas. An audience, as we prepare to introduce them, let's conclude that Psalm 100 you quoted earlier as we started this ceremony just by repeating after me. Say, it is He. We are His. We are His people. The sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. So now it's come time to give thanks for what the Lord has done and reward the students and their celebration of receiving their high school diploma. Let us begin with the first student, Dylan J. Ayers. <laughs> Dylan is the middle son of J. Paul and Tina. After graduation, Dylan is planning to attend TCC and is considering a career in computer science. Next up is Caitlin Bates. <laughs> Caitlin is the daughter of Charlie and Regina Klein. Caitlin is planning to attend TCC and pursue a career in business management. Her ultimate goal is to own her own pet daycare and a boarding facility. Next is Elena Beggs. <laughs> Elena is the daughter of Chip Beggs and Heather Miller and the sister of John Beggs. She loves reading and playing violin. Elena will attend college in the fall. <laughs> Next is Samuel James Burgess. Sam is the second of four children of Brian and Tammy Burgess. Sam's extracurricular activities include rock climbing and investing his paychecks in Bitcoin. He is considering a career in law enforcement in case the whole Bitcoin thing doesn't work out. (laughs) 
Welcome William Dawson Bird. <laughs> William is the son of Jerry and Patty Bird. He enjoys the outdoors and spending time with family and friends. After graduation, Dawson plans to work full time and possibly attend the Tallahassee Fire Academy. <laughs> Megan Francis Clark. <laughs> Megan is the daughter of Jonathan and Angela Clark. Megan participated in the dual enrollment program at Tallahassee Community College. She hopes to attend the nursing program at TCC in the fall. Welcome, Rachel Rose Copeland. <laughs> Rachel is the second daughter of Daniel and Avery Copeland. She enjoys writing, art, and everything American Revolution. She plans to attend Florida State University to pursue a dual degree in creative writing and studio art. <laughs> Catherine Estelle Cox. Catherine is the oldest daughter of Kevin and Jenny Cox and the beloved big sister to Caroline, Julia and Andrew. She plans to attend Agnes Scott to pursue a degree in psychology. Austin Delaney. Austin is Terry and Krista Delaney's firstborn. He continues to grow in godliness and plans on a gap year to save money for college while seeking the Lord's will. Eden Elizabeth Desitel. Eden is extremely excited, like the audience, about the future. Eden will be using her gift of dance to share the gospel and glorify Jesus Christ as a trainee with Ballet Magnificat in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah. Elizabeth Ann Duggar. Yeah. Elizabeth is the eldest daughter of Stacy and Thomas Duggar. She is passionate about social justice and helping others. She plans to pursue a degree in international affairs and public policy. <laughs> Madeline Duggar. <laughs> Madeline is attending FSU on Fulbright Futures and plans to attend medical school. She will continue her work as an advocate for universal health care and the rights of disabled individuals in society. <laughs> David Nathaniel Early. <laughs> David is the son of Scott and Carla Early. He enjoys serving wherever possible. David plans to attend the Baptist College of Florida and become a minister. <laughs> Welcome Sarah Claire Fowler. Sarah is not here. How about Sinclair friends? <laughs> Sinclair is independent, tenacious, kind, fun-loving, easygoing, and a sunshine ray. From climbing a tree to making sure every white spot on the canvas is covered, Ars Gratia Artis. <laughs> James Kelly Gilbert. Otherwise known as Jack, he is the son of Paul and Susan Gilbert and is a four-year letterman in tennis. Jack will be attending FSU and plans on majoring in accounting.
Naomi Gray. <laughs> Naomi is the oldest of seven children born to Donald and Shayla Gray. She plans to attend Flagler College in St. Augustine, Florida, and is interested in journalism, media, and Spanish. Harrison David Green. Harrison is the oldest son of proud parents Harris and Lisa Green. Harrison is using his Bright Future Scholarship to finish his AA while discerning his career path. John Hall. John is the son of Josh and Kendra. John is thankful for his family, his friends, and teachers for their love and support. He and plans include a degree in creative writing. <laughs> Lydia Noel Hanlon. Lydia is the youngest daughter of Brady and Deanne Hanlon. She'll be attending the University of Kentucky, where she will be swimming and pursuing a degree in graphic design and marketing. Anna Christine Harrington. Anna is the daughter of Nicholas and Karen Harrington. She has a spirit of diligence and honors the Lord in all things. Anna plans to finish her AA at TCC and continue growing her photography business, ACH Landscapes. <laughs> Mason Joseph Herring. Mason is the oldest son of Mark and Meg Herring. He loves spending time outdoors and working with wood and will pursue a degree in construction management this fall. <laughs> Margaret Faith Hope Hill. <laughs> Margaret is the daughter of Paul and Tina Hill. She enjoys music, church youth, and being with friends. Margaret is currently dual enrolled at TCC and plans to continue to study at FSU. Fiona Grace Jacoby. Fiona is the beloved daughter of Sarah Timney, Brian Jacoby, and Joe Safar. With a degree in business, she plans to open a greenhouse, coffee, slash shop, slash art center. <laughs> Jacob Curtis Kling. <laughs> Jacob is the oldest child of John and Melissa Kling. In the fall, he will attend the University of Florida and major in applied physiology and kinesiology with plans to pursue medicine. Ethan Lehman. <laughs> Ethan is the eldest son of Kenneth and Wendy Lehman. He loves Jesus, people, and planes. He will attend the United States Air Force Academy. Shane Emerson Lehman. <laughs> Shane is the oldest son of Adam and Christy Lehman. After completing his AA at North Florida College, he plans to attend Police Academy and become a canine officer. <laughs> Cassie Littlefield.
Cassie is the daughter of Scott and Lauren Littlefield. She has a passion for working with horses. She plans to pursue a career riding and training horses. <laughs> Olivia Grace Lunsford. She is the daughter of Reverend David Lunsford and Renee Lunsford. She graduates with an excellent academic record and 30 college credits toward her goal of exploring careers in publishing and creating stylized digital art in her spare time. <laughs> Next is Gabriel Paulus McLeod. He is the son of Drew and Kimberly, has become home educated his entire life. He is currently dual enrolled at TCC and plans to launch his first entrepreneurial endeavor next summer. <laughs> Welcome Mariah Jessica Parlin. <laughs> Mariah is the daughter of Rob and Melissa Parlin. She enjoys the arts and is excited to attend TCC this fall to pursue a career helping others. She is considering business. Grant Payne. Grant is the son of Aaron and Tony Payne. He plans to attend Reformation Bible College in the fall to study theology and Bible in preparation for seminary. <laughs> Jeremiah J.P. Phillips. <laughs> J.P. is the son of Patrick and Sherry Phillips. JP participated in CC, swimming, and track in high school, and achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. He plans to pursue a career as a power plant operator. <laughs> Welcome Stephen Christopher Reagan Selecki. <laughs> Stephen is the oldest son of Stephen and Casey Reagan Selecki. He loves art baking and genealogy. He plans on pursuing a career in baking. <laughs> Trinity Ray Sammons. <laughs> Trinity is the daughter of Matt and April Sammons. Trinity loves studying medical science and has high hopes of pursuing a career in immunology or radiology. <laughs> Leah Rochelle Stewart. <laughs> Leah is the eldest daughter of Leo and Aaron Stewart. She will finish her associates in arts degree from Tallahassee Community College in December and plans on attending Florida State University. <laughs> Nathaniel Isaac Thomas. <laughs> Nathaniel is the youngest of Dave and Carrie Thomas. He is dual enrolled at TCC and is looking for what God has in store for him next. <laughs> Corbin Thornberry. Yeah! Corbin is the oldest son of Nathan and Lottie Thornberry. He is passionate about technology and plans to work for Apple as a customer care specialist. <laughs> L. 
Ellen Grace Turner. Ellen is the daughter of Glenn and Joyce Turner. She is ambitious and talented and plans to attend college next fall to major in business and music. Welcome, Kobe Joshua Vick. Kobe is the older son of Dr. Nicholas and Gabrielle Vick. He loves computers, music, and video games. He plans to pursue a career in computer technology or culinary arts. Paige Leela Vickers. Paige is the daughter of Sean and Carol Vickers. She is graduating from high school with her Associates of Arts degree and plans to attend Florida State University in the fall and pursue a degree in psychology. <laughs> Ella J. Waltz Eden. Eden is the middle daughter of Scott and Wendy Waltz. She loves anime and cosplay. She had plans to attend TCC in the fall and looks forward to a career in writing. <laughs> Ansley Willis. Ansley is the daughter of Kevin and Susie Willis, number five of six siblings. She is dual enrolled at TCC with plans to complete her AA and transfer to FSU. Brandon Joseph Wolf. He is the son of Peter and Kathy Wolf. Brandon enjoys traveling, history, sketching, music, fishing, shooting sports, and riding trains. His plan is to continue his education and travel. <laughs> Grayson Bell Wood. Grayson is the youngest daughter of Bryce and Ed Wood. Grayson loves animals, soccer, and the beach. She plans to attend Florida State University in the fall and study child psychiatry. And that completes the class of 2022. Students at this time, if students, if you'll please stand. There's a high school tradition for receiving a high school diploma of the switching of the tassel. It begins on the right side as you begin this journey, working your way to that graduation. After you receive that diploma, you've completed that task, then and only then are you supposed to move it to the left side. So students at this time, you'll go ahead and take your tassel and switch it to the left side. And parents, make some noise. <laughs> What's going to happen next in just a second one of the students is going to come and close us in prayer and after that prayer the students will then begin their processional out and after that everybody else will be dismissed after they out of the building but thank you for coming and joining the day so i believe this time john if you'll come and close us in prayer then we'll have our exit music please pray with me Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us here today to not only celebrate the graduation of the senior class, but to send us forward into the next chapter of our lives. It can be rather intimidating, of course, going out to be a light in this dark and confusing world. But as stated in 2 Timothy 1, 7, 
You have given us not a spirit of fearfulness, but of power and love and discipline. In every moment of our lives, every triumph and setback, every success and failure, every moment of joy and grief has brought us to this moment. You have brought us to this moment. So why would we worry now? So let this be our prayer, Lord, that no matter what hardships come our way, we will never forget how you have provided for us. And as we leave today, let us go forth with the spirit of power and love and discipline. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Students will exit at this time. Play the song. Again, I'd like to thank you for coming today. And there is no reception. The party is at your house. So thanks for coming. Have a great rest of the day. You're such a professional MC. Sorry, man. You did good, brother. Thank you, brother.